Welcome to Genealogy Basics, Part 4, Other Sources. I'm Elisa Austin at the Grass Valley Library, and over at the Doris Foley Library is... Laura Papani. Yay. <laughs> Good hand off, Elisa. <laughs> I'm Elisa Austin at the Grass Valley Library, and over... Yeah, um, okay, keep going, Elisa. I okay, so recording. we have covered uh, in the past episodes, um, the beginning steps, vital statistics, uh, other genealogy records. Today, we are going to cover websites, organizations, online newspapers and books, and various libraries. And over to you, Laura. Well, I was just going to mention, there's a lot of stuff on these slides. There's a lot of websites, a lot of links. Um, so don't feel like you have to um, scribble down everything that looks interesting. Um, I am happy to send you a PDF of this presentation. Uh, after, if you want to send me an email, my um, email address will be on the last slide. And um, I just wanted to kind of mention that because some of the slides have a lot of a huge amount of stuff on them. Okay. We are we are also yeah. recording this too. So. And yes, so it will be on YouTube on the library's YouTube channel. Okay, mm -hmm. Maggie, next one. Okay, so um, these are two sources that we have mentioned uh, in every single pr um, presentation. Um, so ancestry.com is one um, to, to, be, to be using. Um, they have videos on YouTube. They have a video a YouTube channel. Um, if you look for barefoot genealogists, those are from ancestry.com. Just a reminder that's for ancestry and then it's a just good, good practice um, whenever you're working on your genealogy research is to be skeptical um, about what you find on any of these online sources. Make sure that um, citations, that sources are cited and that you're double checking information. Don't um, just take it as the gospel truth because it's, on, um, because it's on a family tree on the website. You have to be uh, careful. Not everybody is very diligent with their research and sometimes they'll put something up that is family lore or hearsay and might not actually be um, accurate. Um, Fold3 and newspapers.com are two kind of add-ons to ancestry.com. Um, Fold3 is for military records, newspapers.com are is um, scans of newspapers, which is great for obituaries and other stuff. All of these um, you can subscribe to, but the Foley has a subscription that includes full three and newspapers.com if you wanted to use it for free. Um, Ancestry Academy, if you look under extras on ancestry.com, Ancestry Academy has a lot of videos and other resources to kind of help you learn how to use their, their database um, in the most optimal way. They have a what they call a card catalog. Um, those are searchable listings of all of the record collections that they have. Um, sometimes you, you can browse through in there by, um, by title of the collection, by location, by time frame, the years of the collection. And uh, they have a lot of really interesting stuff. And what's important to note is that they are always adding new content. They're always getting access to new collections or getting stuff scanned and in there. Um, if you go to browse and then the card catalog, you will see some of their newer um, additions in there. And the title of one might catch your eye as something that might be important for your family's history. Um, and then each collection, if you click, click on it, will give you information about the scope of the collection. So where it's from, what, type, what time it covers, what records it covers, and that could be really inform interesting information or useful as well. FamilySearch.org is the database um, from the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints from their library, which is, if you look at the picture on the website, it's just amazing. I, Elisa, you've been there, right? I've been there, yes. It is big. It's fun. I remember when I was there many years ago when 
you had to bring a lot of quarters with you to use the copying machine. So I went in with a fanny pack full of quarters, but I, I don't think they, I think they just use a, a, like a, a debit card or something now. So you don't have to go in with a whole bunch of quarters. <laughs> you know is that fanny packs are, are coming back in style, I hear. Oh, wow. <laughs> a huge library and they make a lot of their, they, they create a lot of content in terms of scanning or indexing. Um, and they, they present it on uh, familysearch.org. They have an annual conference on genealogy. Their 2021 sessions are on their website and they are, um, they're free to, to view. And I just noticed that they're gonna have their next, their 2022 conference, Roots Tech Conference is gonna be in the beginning of March, the third to the fifth. And that's also going to be completely free and online. So those are also some things to explore to see if they have topics that are useful to you. And um, I find there, I find it difficult to find things on their, on the website, I will be honest. So a lot of times for this, I will just go into Google and I'll look for family search roots tech conference, and that'll get me right to the page rather than trying to navigate um, through their website to get to it. Um, you're able to send your records to Pinterest through family search, and they also have uh, ethnic records or, or, or um, records from different countries. If you go to their search, their research wiki, look at me showing you how to do it with my finger. <laughs> here. Um, if you go to the, the research wiki, it'll bring up a map of the world and you can click on the country that your ancestors are from and drill down to, to all of their information about or and um, finding guides for how to find things about ancestry from those areas. Um, you can create a fan chart. Elisa made me say this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a reminder that there's all kinds of uh, functionalities on family search and a fan chart. If you've ever seen it, it's really cool. It looks like a fan and it's a way of presenting the information about your family. Um, oh, thank you. Susan just posted that you can get to the Roots Tech conference site directly by going to rootstech.org. Thank you, Susan. Um, familysearch.org, you would set up your, your um, account there. It is free to set up an account. You will sometimes encounter records that it says are not available to you, that they're available, available from affiliate libraries. The, the Foley is an affiliate library, so we are able to get to some, some of that extended content. If you either come here to search um, or you let me know and I can help you find it. Um, Laura? Yes. On your slide where it says free version, do you mean free account? Because there is no versioning on familysearch.org. It's all free. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I yeah. Think that's what was meant. Thank you okay. for clarifying that, right? Um, they also have some pretty cool mobile apps. They have Family Tree and Memories. The Family Tree one is a way to kind of organize yourself. So it's um, all, organize your family tree on the go, but it also has a, um, other features that they're adding to it, like a way to map your ancestors on, on this little map. And then the all fun and popular uh, to-do list, which I need all the time. Okay, next slide, Maggie. Okay, uh, find my past. So findmypast.com is, is a uh, United Kingdom uh, site. Um, it has, their newspapers and periodicals are included uh, in the price. And so that's really nice to have. They also have directories and social history um, such as like clubs and societies, so you can research those. Uh, they have immigration records and the 1939 register, which was created the, on the eve of World War II. It's, it's like a census. The 1931 census was destroyed by fire. They also have uh, institutions and organizational records. Um, they, they have uh, education and work records, such as railroads, uh, workhouses, merchant navy records, and so on. Uh, 
they have live webinars on Facebook. So um, they give some really nice videos on there. Payment is by month. Um, uh, and uh, they recently added British crime records. Uh, so, and that consists of 6.6 .6 million uh, records plus mug shots. So that's pretty cool. And then we have My Heritage. Um, my Heritage. Um, I learned that you had to you have to pay like a year up front. So um, Christmas is coming up. So <laughs> anyway, uh, they uh, genie.com is part of My Heritage, and you can learn um, various matches to someone. Like if you want to find out how you're related to Kevin Bacon, you can do that. Uh, let's see. There's um, they have smart matching and I get those delivered to my email. And uh, so you, you can take a look at it and see if this person's uh, records are uh, the same as what you might have. They might have more information. And then they have a tree consistency checker. Um, make sure everything um, looks right in terms of dates and, and so on. Um, they have a record detective, uh, they have global name translation, they have family statistics. Um, that's pretty interesting. Um, you can uh, find out like how many people were, you know, a cobbler or something like that. Uh, they have a pedigree map, so you can pinpoint where your ancestors were living, um, you know, in, in villages and so on. Uh, they have instant discoveries and they have 14, they have 14 billion records. Now, the, the thing that I like about my heritage is they have in photo enhancement, colorization and animation. And, um, and the animation is called deep nostalgia. It's the latest in AI technology. So if we go to the next slide. There is my great grandmother on the left, and there, the, the second slide or second picture, she is colorized. Um, I think the colors are kind of odd. Some of them aren't that great. And then the animated one uh, picture on the right, some people either find that creepy or cool. So <laughs> you might want to put in the chat if you find it creepy or cool. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, so it's Harry Potter-ish, you know, like the wizards. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried it on any of mine. I don't think I want to. <laughs> but apparently people love it. You know, they've, they've put almost all their resources into this, the photo features for the last year. They're way behind on their ethnicity estimates because they've been putting all their their people and money into this photo stuff. Yeah, I do notice from like the the turning of her head how much she looks like my grandmother. So, and even me. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, she does. <laughs> so, okay, next slide. Ah, she moved again. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would also like, I, I'd like to backtrack just a little bit, put on my librarian hat and say, we don't usually, um, we're careful about, we're not recommending that you go out and buy a subscription to either find my path or my heritage. We're just kind of mentioning these as large, um, well-known um, resources that you might consider if it fits into your plan, so. And when the, when the um, Family History Center at the local um, LDS church in Nevada City, or, or, or most churches, depending on when people are tuning in from, they have free access to find my past and to my heritage. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah, they do. All, the, okay. all the subscription sites they have access to through their portal. And most of them aren't open yet again during the pandemic, but when they are, that's that's where people can go to get the free access. And I should introduce Susan Rogers, who's who's jumping in and, and helping us out. Um, Susan is one of the um, illustrious volunteers at the Foley 
um, who quite obviously specializes in the genealogy. So um, really appreciate your help um, and your extra insight. So Archive Grid is, um, is a database that's supported by OCLC, which is a big library acronym. We love our acronyms. Um, you can go in there to search about more than 5 million collections or records of, um, that are descriptions of different archives. So you might be lucky and put in Hezekiah Hosmer. Hezekiah Hosmer. He's my great, great grandfather. <laughs> of course. Hezekiah Hosmer. H. 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 We'll call him. And, um, and find that his papers are in different collections. So um, that could be useful in finding stuff that's not, um, it, it's not necessarily going to have the, or it's not going to have links to the actual papers, but it'll tell you where you, they are so that you can go check that website and that um, organization and see if you're able to get access to them online or find out more about it by contacting the institution. And then Jed, Jedcom, is it Jed or Ged, Elisa? I'm sorry. I, I pronounce it Jedcom. Jedcom. It's actually, if you were to go to the LDS version, it's at jedcomx.org. Um, this, this is a bit more advanced than a beginner course. We're just putting this on here so that you're familiar with the term if you hear it. Um, it's, um, it's advanced in that it shows it's basically a format for, for structuring genealogical records when you upload them. So just beware of the term, but you can feel free to ignore this website entirely. It's not gonna really help you with your research right now. Go ahead, Alisa. Okay. And next slide. There we go. Okay, so Facebook has hundreds, if not thousands of groups. <laughs> um, there's random acts of genealog genealogical kindness. Um, that one's kind of fun. People uh, will post something like uh, a letter and they can't read something and everybody chimes in to, to guess what, what the word is in a letter. So there's ancestralfindings.com. Uh, uh, there's Irish genealogy, Ontario ancestors, Mayflower descendants, Scotch Irish genealogy, Cherokee ancestors, Pennsylvania ancestors, and then there's the um, and then there's Megan Smolniak. Um, she's kind of like one of the rock stars of genealogy. So um, she tends to do a lot of celebrity um, genealogies. Besides Susan Rogers. She's right, right. right. <laughs> she'll do she'll do presidents. So she, you know, so uh, then there's uh heritagequestonline.com. You can get that through our library website. And uh, some genealogists use Instagram and Twitter. And um, I I haven't used it for for um, genealogy, but I, I know of many other people that do. So, okay, and then we're gonna go to online grave sites. So we need to just, there we go. We have, so um, I use find a grave a lot. Um, they have cemetery photos on the website. Um, they have descriptions and genealogies. And sometimes you can find distant relatives um, because sometimes people will post uh, and leave flowers on the website and say, from your great, 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 great granddaughter. And I'm like, wait, who's that? <laughs> um, you can also upload photos. You can request a photo of a tombstone to be taken. Um, so on the right there is my great grandfather. He was in Tombstone, Arizona during the OK Corral shootout. And uh, I learned that there was a, a new bronze plaque on his grave for his Civil War service. <laughs> and I contacted my cousins and asked, um, 
I don't remember Frank being in the Civil War and they were puzzled as well. And so I found the people and I told the people that had placed it there that there was another Frank B. Austin in the area and that he was probably the one <laughs> who um, was actually um, in the Civil War. So they were removed the photo, uh, they, re they removed the plaque. And um, so, yeah, always check to make sure there's not another uh, per same person with the name in, in the area. Um, there's also billiongraves.com. They have cemetery photos. Um, Interment.net has cemetery photos. They and they have a kind of a, a, a Boolean uh, advanced search site. Uh, there's also uh, the Patriot Patriot and Grave Index uh, through the Sons of the American Revolution. Um, you can research it. You have to go to the the top left of the screen to find do the the search. Laura will talk more about that. And over to you, Laura. <laughs> You're, you're, you're muted. <laughs> I just did that slide, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next slide, please, Maggie. Okay, so DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, they, um, they have resource, research guides underneath their library, ta uh, library tab, I guess you should say. Um, and their genealogical research system is what you would go to to kind of um, they've got various different ways of searching people and you can click on your ans um, ancestor the ancestor search and put in a name and if this person was around at the time of the revolution and, and fought in it um, then or served in it in some way then you might get some information on there like basically you could see William Austin you could see his pension number where um, his service description for birth, death, and all that kind of stuff, his rank, et cetera. They also have done a lot of work to transcribe um, the, the trees and the information in family Bibles. So that's um, an interesting thing to try to find. Uh, it, it, if you have some information in there, that would be pretty cool too, if your family Bible is in there. Okay, um, Maggie, beep. We're talking about film strips. Anybody remember film strips? And how you beep to go next? Um, and then there's the sons. We had the daughters. Now we have the sons of the American Revolution. They also have um, a research system that you can get into and search under. And um, they have there's some things that you could contribute to if uh, you find one of your ancestors on there. And those are um, information about their grave, the grave detail and then maybe a biography about them if you have um, some family information about or some stuff that you've researched that will kind of flesh out this picture of um, the patriot who's on their site. And they also have a um, section there for links, the sar.org great links um, has some great links on it. There you go. All right, Alisa. Okay. And over it. Okay, so there's another website. It's called the Ancestor Hunt, and they they've kind of organized various links. So they have a Library of Congress newspapers on there. They have a listing of LDS microfilm numbers via FamilySearch.org. Um, they have high school yearbooks. Uh, school records, um, it looks like they're going to be adding that, that's kind of scary. <laughs> um, articles and reference guides. And um, another thing to look, look for is, um, is to high school websites because they might have yearbooks online. I found my dad's um, yearbook on, uh, what was that, um, George Washington High School in Los Angeles. and. I managed to find a tiny little picture of him in the mural class. So, 
And then, of course, there's Linkpendium. A lot of library or genealogists use Linkpendium. Uh, they have like 10 million records and resource directory to everything on the web about families. So, uh, and over to you, Laura. All right, so don't be frightened by the next slide. It is a whole <laughs> bunch of different websites that um, are worth exploring, or some of them at least are worth exploring, depending on what you're doing. Um, Cindy's list is, is kind of, it's, it's one of the older lists, I think. Um, and there's just a wealth of information on there particularly on different kind of subject areas. It's, it, it'll give you links to other websites that might have information that you're looking for. So a particular um, ethnic group or like Italians, Germans, you're trying to research your ancestry or um, baptisms, all, all kinds of subjects like that, they, will they might have links to. Genealogy com is not, is a read only site it's not active but it's archived and some of the um old some of the chat um chat streams whatever you call those um oh gosh some of the some of the old conversations might have some information in there that could help you usgen.web usgenweb.org or geneweb um, has links to a network of sites on U.S. genealogy. And further down this list, you'll see um, the World, World Gene Web Project, which is similar, but has resources by country. So you can look for different um, countries' information there. Uh, Archive.org is trying to build a digital library at, of internet sites, it's well it's well known for having the Wayback Machine, which is a uh, a way of seeing what a particular website looks like at a point in time. It's kind of interesting, so don't think you can ever disappear from the web. <laughs> it's very difficult. You might be on the Wayback Machine. They that's a good source for digital books on genealogy, or maybe like a list of. Um, records from a particular county or something like that. Good to mention um, reverse image searches on Google or Pinterest if you're looking for something. Um, Open Library also has family history books. If you browse, if you go to the browse tab and then search genealogy, you'll see a whole bunch of options there and then you can narrow it down from there. Roots Web we mentioned. Um, this last one, on the first column, just scratch or just ignore that, that um, we updated the link and moved it under specific regions. So um, ignore that particular bullet point. Oh, I missed that one. It's okay, it's okay. I it put it in two okay. places, okay. Yeah, it's okay, There's no, there was no time to fix it. Um, Treelines.com is kind of funny. It's kind of fun. You can use it to create your family story. WeRelate.org and Wikitree are are kind of similar communities that are trying to work on a single family tree, right? So they are, you can um, contribute there and um, you might find some leads there, but since it's kind of group sourced, you, again, be careful of the accuracy, verify the accuracy of stuff that posts there. stevemorse.org is kind of a, is a pretty cool website. It's got a lot of immigration records or actually, it doesn't actually have the records. It's an aggregator that helps you to search other platforms easy, uh, more easily and um, has easy search interfaces. So things like um, uh, uh, ships arriving or ships manifest into Ellis Island or other ports in New York, Philadelphia, um, San Francisco, it's a good place to go to try to um, work that work on that or to try to find the information that you need. WolframAlpha.com, that, it's a, that's a weird one. <laughs> that's kind of a, that is, that's one of those sites that you should check out just to kind of play around with it. It's like a statistical site, but it, it, it lets you search 
data in really off the wall ways, like all famous people named Steve, or I mean, it's it's really unusual, but they do have some genealogic, genealogically specific type of ways. I, I can't explain wolframalpha.com, I'm sorry, but- It's for nerds. Yes. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. You know, it was like, what is this? Oh, it's really cool. But anyway. It, I'd, I'd say it's a tools. It's a site with tools on it for working with numbers, with dates, converting currencies from olden times to current value and that kind of stuff. So it's got all different kinds of tools on it. Yeah. Right, if you wanted to find out uh, uh, how much, uh, what, um, uh, how much flower cost or something like that in today's terms from that time. You know, it's just... Anyway, <laughs> check it out and send us a postcard because you'll, you'll just go down a rabbit hole there. Jen Gophers, or uh, Jean, I keep saying Jen, genegophers.com is also a good source for finding um, genealogy books that have been scanned and are, are online. I'm not going to really go through the specific regions ones, but just be aware there are a lot of specific regional um, websites either sourced in that country like um, jinuki.org.uk. Moose Roots, I think, is, is um, I don't think that is still working. Oh, but it's not? I, I don't okay. think so. I crossed it off as the region. Uh, oh. Freesend.org.uk is the one that we moved. That, those are the UK census records. Um, Vivas V, who was who, the Dutch ancestry one. And then also accessgenealogy.com. We get questions from folks who are looking for information on um, African-American and Native American uh, ancestors. And they have pretty um, good sections on, on um, on those topics. So. Elisa, over to you. Okay. All righty. Newspapers. So there are many sites uh, now that have newspapers digitized and online. So there's genealogybank.com. There's newspapers.com. Um, you can have an extra subscription through uh, Ancestry, or you can do it alone. Uh, find my past uh they have it within the subscription there's google google books have newspaper articles uh, a relative found information on our ancestors murder from 1863 um on google books there's gutenberg.org uh, there's british newspaper archive um uh, .co.uk, there's FultonHistory.org, and I like using um, Chronicling America through the Library of Congress website. Um, in fact, yesterday I found that um, my ancestor won a bronze art piece, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> and then there's Gen Disasters, so if you want to find out uh, disasters during your ancestors' time. That's that's an interesting website, uh, like you know the uh, 1906 San Francisco quake and things like that. Um, and of course your state archives. And then there's elephant.com, uh, which has historical newspapers. And then there's the California Digital Newspaper Collection. And then um, another. One of the things most people use newspapers for are articles and obituaries. And so um, it might list uh, family members, uh, a cause of death, you know, if there was like a homicide in a trial. And, and some of the things you'll find on in newspaper articles are kind of fun. You know, a little mention like parties, piano recitals, um, <laughs> I came across um, an article of my great great grandfather's first wife's death, and it went into all this detail. And she was saying, "Please tell my friends that I died happily." So, and then there's uh, companies uh, competing in sports. Now, that was something that was popular back back in those days. My my grandfather took place in. Uh, um, uh, with his company, he worked for a carpet company 
and they would have like baseball games with the um, the Folgers Company, Folgers Coffee Company, or C and H Sugar. So, and then of course um, there were sh sheriff's sales, um, and you can find a lot through a sheriff's sale, like land seizures, especially during economic crisis during like uh, 1873, 1884, uh, and 1893. Uh, so it may list relatives around the property boundaries. So that's something to look forward to. Um, so, and then um, another thing you could find in like old newspaper articles are the um, help wanted ads. Uh, my grandfather would place ads for yard work, um, you know, that he was available for yard work because he was supporting the family because his father was an alcoholic. So, um, you know, his, his ads were kind of desperate. So, and then on in that photograph there, um, my grandfather is listed as being in a marathon. So that was kind of fun to find. So, and over to you, Laurel. You know, I was just gonna point out that finding your ancestor's name in some of these papers is for a piano recital or something like that is is pretty is that's a pretty intense search so you would want to try to find one of the databases that actually has searchable pdfs and not not be kind of like flipping through their lifetime's worth of papers so anyway just my comment mm -hmm. um maps are good, also good sources to kind of put, um, play around with. Um, be aware that county boundaries change or and sometimes even the names of the counties change. Um, some people have been able to find like their old family farmhouse or the old family home still on Google Earth Maps because they have seen the address on maybe on the census and they were able to kind of track it back. So that's kind of fun. These are all fun ways to kind of put context to, to the names and the dates um, that you're discovering. Um, and two places to kind of play around on are davidrumsey.com, which is been, um, the David Rumsey collection has been around for more than 30 years. He's, they've got about 150,000 maps up on their website and you can, the focus is on kind of rare 16th to 21st century maps from North and South America, although they do have European, Asian and, and others, but that's kind of what their focus is. So sometimes you can find something and figure out where your family's homestead was or their farm was or, or something along those lines. Um, and then historicarials.com is a way to kind of look at an address and you can see it now from like a Google Earth type perspective, but then you can look back and see if there are aerials from like 20 years ago or 19, I found one from my address that was back in 1968. There was no house there, so. Yeah, my, my area, they had orange, the orange orchards down Southern California. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Sandburn fire insurance maps are also really good ways to see um, information about homes in towns, particularly. Um, it'll tell you something, it can sometimes tell you something about the, the makeup of the house, whether it's brick or framed house or something like that. Uh, windows, sheds, outbuildings. Um, we have s some of the local, the local Sandburn fire insurance maps here. And you know what, I was gonna look this up. They're from like 18, is it 1895 or earlier? Something something around them, they're historical maps. Do you happen to know Susan or Elisa? I didn't, I didn't look it up. I'm sorry, was that about Sanborn? Yes, the time frame for them. No, I don't know. 18 something something, okay. <laughs> but I think, yeah, eight, around 1890s, roughly. Yeah. 1895 is sticking in my head, but I don't know if I'm just um, making that up. But um, you can access them through the Library of Congress uh, website. You can actually get to the images of, the, of them from 
all over the country. So, and the Doris Foley Library has Sanborn maps as well. They're in binders there. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So now we're going to organizations. And um, as we mentioned before, um, there's the Daughters of the American Revolution, DAR.org, and they've got a magazine. And then there's the uh, National Genealogical so Society. They have classes, magazine, annual conferences, and then there are lots of state and local genealogy society. What? Wait, wasn't it the National Genealogical Society? I think their conference is in Sacramento next year. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's uh, state and local genealogy societies, and then there's uh, many family associations. So um, you might want to look for your own family and see if there's an association. Um, sometimes they have, you know, newsletters, Facebook website, and DNA studies. So, and and I think whoever I don't know where the people tuning in here are from, but there's the Nevada County Genealogical Society. Yep. There their information is ncgs.info. There's one in Placer County that uh, when it met in person, it met in Auburn, but a lot of groups are having online meetings. So all you have to do is Google blah, blah, County Genealogical Society. Right. And, and it'll come up no matter where you live. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We've got two genealogy societies in, in town. So, uh, and over to you, Laura. What's the other one besides the Nevada County one? I'm, I'm, okay. All right. Put yeah, you on the spot. Well, there's, uh, yeah. there's the historical society, but they don't really get into genealogy. There's well, there's a smaller group, and, and the name escapes me. It's, it's like called Grassroots. Roots. Grassroots. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'm I'm the coordinator of that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Grassroots it's, Genealogical Society, and we have we've been having online meetings during the pandemic. Uh, but we're taking off for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. what a relief that I mentioned that there were two or Susan, I would have been in big trouble with Susan. It's, it's okay. No, really. It's a very small casual group, but, but what we enjoy each other. Yeah. It's, how many members do you have? Is it like, I heard like 10. Well, it depends on how, how, what you count as a member. The, um, I've got probably at least 30 or 40 people on the email list. Uh -huh. And uh, when we were meeting in person, we were getting about about 10 people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Okay. So then um, other sources, um, just to mention real quick, uh, Maggie, the next slide, please. I, she's busy. She's putting something in the chat. So uh, <laughs> YouTube videos. I think we mentioned Barefoot Genealogist, but there's a whole bunch of other ones. Like, again rabbit holes that you could go down, but here, here are some of the ones that, um, that Elisa has, has watched. And I'm assuming that those are the ones that you particularly like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, findmypast.com videos and um, TV show, who do you think you are to make, give you some hints or some ideas of, of things to explore. And then the next slide is about podcasts. So there's a whole bunch of podcasts, which are ones you just listen to on Spotify or something else. Um, Family Tree Magazine has a podcast, Genealogy Happy Hour, Genealogy Go Gold. Genealogy guys, um, apparently they are also used car salesmen. salesmen. That's what the picture looks like to me. But oh, I was thinking ESPN. They look like sports announcers yeah, to me. Okay. Let's get ready to ramble and do genealogy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> animated them, Elisa. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, podcasts are sometimes an overlooked thing, um, but you can get some good ideas from from a whole bunch of different sources because everybody's eager to to share things that they've discovered um, to make genealogists' lives e lives lives easier. So. Yeah, with, with the podcast, you can get kind of the latest updates in gene in the genealogy world. So breaking news. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we are on magazines, and um, so 
Uh, you can get Family Tree Magazine online. You can have it delivered to your email address. There's also um, historymagazine.com. You can get the app for that. And then there's the National Genealogical Society Magazine, which is online. Um, there, there's a picture there on the right. And I don't, I'm going to have to hold this up to myself. I can't see myself right now. I'm going to hold it really close. And this is the quarterly magazine. Can you see it? Yes, okay. So the quarterly magazine has uh, more of an analytical, analytical case studies. So, um, so if you're really into genealogy, you, you, you'll find this interesting. Um, and of course, there's local history books and booklets. There's a lot of digital books online now. So you can go to familysearch.org slash library slash books. And another source you can look for is um, weather information. Um, you're probably scratching your head on that, but um, if you go to like almanac.com, you can just you can kind of figure out why your ancestor left the area. <laughs> there might have been a drought. There might have been, you know, um, plague of locusts. Yes, so that can give you uh, an indication there of why your ancestors moved. So, and on to Laura. Okay, so other sources to look at, libraries and archives, hooray. Um, we're, we're actually blessed in this county. We have two resources for historical information, the Foley Library, which is run by the county, and then the Searles Library, which is run by the Nevada County Historical Society. So both, both of them, both us and the um, Cyrils have a wealth of information about um, local families and um, history in general. Um, but there's also the National Archives or NARA, the Record Administration Libraries in California. There's one in San Bruno and one in Paris. Um, the Sutro Library is part of Berkeley, UC Berkeley. They, if you go there, just let, just know they have very strict rules. They're very, um, they're very um, formal in terms of their rules. But again, they have lots of information as does the state library, the state archives. Um, there's digital libraries to check out, the digital public library and the digital library on American slavery. Um, archives everywhere. So we've mentioned Canada, um, again, we mentioned the Salt Lake City LDS Library. This Allen County Public Library is in, isn't that, oh, now I'm going to forget. It's Indiana, right? Isn't it? Fort yes. Fort yeah. Wayne. Yeah. Yep. It's, one, it's a hub of, uh, it has a huge genealogy, genealogy library, and it's kind of a hub of information there. I was on there, and I found some cool forms. The, asked about forms. They have some cool forms to use to, to track your genealogy research. Midwest Genealogy Center is kind of similar. Oh, that's where I found the forms. No wonder I couldn't find them again on Allen County Public Library. <laughs> <laughs> track your track what you find and where. <laughs> Good lesson. Anyway, <laughs> I, seriously, I spent five minutes trying to find the forms again, but I was on the wrong site. Um, Midwest Genealogy Center. One of their um, collections is the U.S. Railroad Retirement Board pension records. They've got 1.5 million records on that. And um, Hathi Trust um, is again another source for digital books. Um, there, it's a digital library. They're trying to um, scan, get scans of of books from all over the world, um, accessible to everybody who wants to learn. So, so, okay, so thank you for um, um, participating and watching our show. Do you have any questions? Do we have any questions out there? While we're waiting to see if people have questions, I do have a couple things to mention. Um, one is that, again, if you email me, I'll be happy to send you a copy of the slides from this presentation. I'm also starting a mailing list for the library just for genealogy um, 
to let you know about anything new that goes up on the website or new classes we might have, new presentations. It's only used for genealogy. So if you would like to be on that mailing list, um, my email ad address is Laura, L-A-U-R-A dot Papani, P for Peter A, P-P-A-N for Nancy I, and then the ending of the library reference email you see here at co.nevada.ca.us. So if you just email me or give me a call at the number there, which is the Foley's phone number, then um, I'll be happy to put you on the mailing list, but I will, oh, or you could be smart like Susan and just put it in the chat. Thanks, Susan. I don't know why I don't think about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm old school. You know, I was gonna write it on a piece of paper and hold it up, so. Um, anyway, just email me and I'll be happy to put you on that mailing list, but it is only um, if you request it since the library is really careful about how we use your contact information. And also that the next um, program, which is the final one in the series is going to be Tuesday, August 31st at 2 p.m. And it's about DNA and um, genealogy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of an overview. We're not going to get too scientific. <laughs> so, but um, we'll show you the tips of what you can do with some of the results. So. Maggie, do you mind stopping? You can stop sharing the screen so we can see if there's anybody who has questions. <clears throat> if you want to just pipe, um, unmute yourself and pipe up or you can put it in the chat. And also Maggie, if you don't mind checking to see um, if you're able to get to the presentation on Facebook, I know that was um, a little bit tricky before. If you see if anybody there has any questions. I'm not seeing any in the chat here. No questions from Facebook. Okay. Facebook is silent. I don't see any here either. So Susan, putting you on the spot again. Um, was there anything else? Like, is there what, is there, are there any sites that you really love and find useful that we didn't mention that you're like, I can't believe they didn't mention blah, blah, blah. Yes, I think that for people who are just getting started and looking for general education, it's it's you have to pay $49 a year for it, but FamilyTreeWebinars.com has over a thousand video wow. tutorials. They're each at least an hour in length. And I always recommend it to every group that I ever speak to, FamilyTreeWebinars.com. Okay. And they've got, they must have 30 or 40 beginning tutorials. They've got 30 or 40 or 50 on DNA. They have tutorials wow. on almost every ethnic group or country. Um, they've, and you can look, if you just go there, you don't have to join. You can look at their catalog and see uh, what they have. Most of the speakers have handouts that if you, if you join and you're a member, you can download. And the best part is that you can view these for free when they first are given live and for seven days after that. So if you check into their website you can actually look ahead to their entire calendar and register for an entire year ahead. And you'll get a reminder a couple of days ahead. You'll get a reminder the day of the webinar. And then if you can't watch it that particular day while it's live, you still have seven days to watch it for free before it goes into the membership area. And I just can't recommend it highly enough. It's just so comprehensive. Yeah, I always tell people if they're going to have surgery and be laid up for a week or be in bed and can't do anything, just pay the 49 bucks and, and you know, <laughs> and then you got webinars for a year. But I highly recommend that. And then FamilySearch.org um, has tutorials as well and on, on specific state areas. And if you go to uh, research a state, if you go research records and then you click on the map and you click on a state, you can get to where... It's, it's kind of strange the videos aren't as easy to find as they used to be, but they're still definitely there. And they're, that's all free. That's always free at familysearch.org. And it's under the help, I believe it's under the help menu. Thank you. That's, those are both Thank really you. tips. I, I've, I think I've used that Family Tree webinar site 
but it, <laughs> it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really good. And they yeah. even have some, they have some free ones. Like if people have done a little bit of DNA and they've heard of DNA Painter, uh, they have two or three videos by the guy who invented dnapainter.com, uh, who invented the tool at dnapainter.com for, for putting, uh, if you're into DNA, uh, it's a very interesting tool. And, and I think he's probably made a deal with Family Tree Webinar to, that he would make the, the videos as long as they were free to everybody. And, and so they're free there too. I, I think we're going to be discussing DNA Painter in the last program. So. Yeah, it's, it's a little much for beginners, but for people yeah. who have already sort of gotten started, if, if you know how to use a chromosome browser, it's a fun thing to do. If you're not used to looking at chromosome browsers, then it's then it's then it's a like little Chrome much. <laughs> <laughs> I used <think> Chrome. <laughs> it's still different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's oh. no other questions, then um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. It will be up uh, posted up on YouTube on the library's YouTube channel. We usually post things within a day or two. And um, thank you very much. And we hope we see you again on uh, August 31st, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Thank you. And thank you. Thank Steve. you. Thanks a lot. Take care.